18. Let's go. On a start of the week off with a Superbike TT podium. Can he stand on that big bike podium again, Dave? Next away, James Hillier, 10 second intervals as ever. James Hillier on the Kawasaki. Here's Connor Cummins through the bottom of Bray Hill. These riders won't have eaten for around three to four hours before the start of this race because due to the speeds they reach when they break hard, they slow, the bike slows, but the contents of their stomachs don't, so they don't want anything in there during the race. Dean Harrison away. Yeah, this is the man that a lot of people have tipped to take this race win. And this is the other man that a lot of people have tipped to as well. He won the big superbike race at uh, the start of TT Race Week. Michael Dunlop on the Tyco BMW chasing Dean Harrison. Yep, sure to be a force to be reckoned with. Over Agos Leap goes Dean Harrison. Dean Harrison has been coming out of the block so quickly all week. These other riders can't afford to let him get any time on them early in the race. Peter Hickman, another of those who's been tipped. He's got his first TT win. He backed that in the Superstock TT early in the week. Can he grab win number two on the Superbike? There goes Pete Hickman. There was a lot of talk whether he would go for the Superstock machine and put some slicks on it, but he has gone for Superbike. Dean Harrison, he's already caught Hutchie and he's passed him. He's not wasting any time in the beginning of this lap. Connor Cummins into Balacrane. I don't think there was any doubt in my mind that, uh, that we would see Peter Hickman aboard that Superbike today, Dave. That's right, we're on board with Peter Hickman through Crosby. He only lasted one lap in Superbike on the, the first race of the week. Oh, and a little wiggle. So, Dean Harrison into Glen Helen. He led on the Superbike race. We'll have to wait for Hickman and Dunlop to come through. He's the fastest rider so far. Yeah, he certainly looks quick. This is on board on the rise up. Adesaris Cottage to Cronkivody. We're looking now down on Dean Harrison. And it's super fast through here. It is pretty much all the way around the course. The back wheel shaking around. Yeah, it certainly is. He's asking a lot from that Silicon Engineering Kawasaki. That back end, you saw it just uh, battling for traction on the way out onto Cronkivody straight. Lovely from Peter Hickman. He is... Oh, what's happened here? Someone with a catastrophic engine failure by the looks of it. There's oil and smoke. James Hillier. James Hillier's race is definitely over as we see the Quattro Plant Kawasaki roll to a stop. Now, there could be there could be oil on the course here, Dave. This could be quite serious. And that's around the Bagaro area of the course as well, Cameron. Yeah, James has done the right thing. He's pulled off the racing line immediately, and you can see the oil there down the road. That was Michael Rutter just going through. We're on board now with Michael Dunlop. Michael Dunlop in third place on the leaderboard. He was two and a half seconds ahead of Hillier, who will now drop because he is out of the races. Josh Brooks comes through. Well, you could see that visually it cost Michael Dunlop a huge amount of time where he had to slow for the yellow flag. He had no choice but to slow. The only person I think will benefit from that would be Connor Cummins because he's already gone through, of course. The likes of Dean Harrison, Peter Hickman and Michael Dunlop will have lost oh, a few seconds. Look at Dean Harrison leaving a telltale trail of black rubber on his way out of Mayhill. Michael Dunlop putting on the style, but he dropped back to fourth place at Bluff, but that would have been because he had to slow. Connor Cummins has shuffled up from to third position on the leaderboard. Throw to the gooseneck then, Connor Cummins. Well, with Pete Hickman as he rides out of Parliament Square. Peter Hickman in second place. He's around five seconds down on Dean Harrison. That's David Johnson just ahead of Peter Hickman. He's caught Davo Johnson on the Golf BMW. Hopefully he can get past without it costing him any time. So this is the approach into Ramsey Hairpin, and he'll probably get him on the exit, I would imagine. Dean Harrison continues to lead. Look at that footage, Dave. It's almost like when he was on that 600, just tucked in. Connor Cummins in third place, or well, a battle for third place with Michael Dunlop. Peter Hickman in second, still chasing Dean Harrison on the leaderboard. So Peter Hickman now going past Ian Hutchinson. He's had to contend with a little bit of traffic, Pete. It'll be interesting to see if that's affected his split times over the mountain. Well, he was 2.3 seconds behind the race leader, Dean Harrison, at Ramsey, and 8.4 seconds ahead of Michael Dunlop. Boy, have we got a race on our hands. They'll be coming over the mountain. 
Elwood Heights then dropping down into Douglas to complete a lap 37 and three quarter miles. Not sure how long it'll take the marshals to clean up that oil spill at the bottom of Vigaro, but that could have an effect on how long we have to wait for another lap record. Well, there's been a lot of talk of 135 miles an hour after what we've seen this week. Dean Harrison was seven seconds inside the lap record at Glen Helen, but however, over the mountain he slowed, and he's around five and a half seconds around outside the lap record as Connor Cummins comes in for his pit stop. Which is still a blindingly quick pace, Dave. But Connor Cummins, third overall at present. He's trailing Peter Hickman and Dean Harrison. And here is Dean Harrison, the race leader. He was around a second faster than Hickman at Crocknamona. Steve Plater is waiting. Here we go, Dean Harrison in the pits. Connor's on the road first, but of course it's all to play for in the paddock here now. He had a five-second lead. Hickey's brought it back to 2.5 seconds, so it's all to play for. Harrison five and a half seconds outside the lap record at the end of lap two. Michael Dunlop is in. We can hear Connor starting up and getting ready to go. He's first out on the road, still in third place. That's it, we're all fueled up, ready to go. Bike started up down the pit lane, away he goes. Out on there for lap three. Peter Hickman into the pits. Right, we've got Hickey in the pits here. The boys are chilling out. They're quite a major change for Hickey from race one, from the first two bike race. I know they're using a completely different rear tyre. My prediction was for Hickey to win and try and bring it out of the bag. He's obviously well happy with the Dunlops. The guys are just uh, getting, the, getting the bike pulled up. Rear wheels in, locked up, talked up. Good to go. Hickey's chilled out. Having a quick chat with the boys. Oh, oh, oh. That was so tight, getting that fuel cap back on and out for him to get out of pit lane. It all matters here for the pit stops. Well, Peter Hickman said that he was going to go for it from the word go on the first lap. He felt he'd been holding back a little bit earlier in the week. He's using the tyre that he used in Wednesday's practice, and it seems so far to be paying off, but Dean Harrison is still the man on top of the leaderboard. Yeah, he is, and it was Dean that was the man that went for it from the start, as we've seen all week. He put the gap into his competition in that first, first two sectors. 1.4 seconds, the difference between Dean Harrison, the race leader, and Peter Hickman in second place. Connor Cummins back, 23 and a half seconds back in third. And Michael Dunlop, surprisingly, seven and a half seconds back in fourth. He's way off the pace this time. He is at the moment, Dave, but it is the top three, as predicted, that are dicing for it. We've got Pete Hickman and Michael Dunlop, both on Dunlop shot BMWs, and they're against... Dean Harrison on the Metzler. Exactly. Hickman lost a second to Harrison in the pits. Yeah, you can't afford to lose any time for your competition in those pit stops, but they're all back on track now, and it's up for them to make up the time. Ian Hutchinson, the fastest of the pit stops. Michael Donald was 56.2. Dean Harrison was 56.3, and Peter Hickman was 57.2. Josh Brooks exit quarter bridge. Sounds great. It certainly does. That V4 has a heck of a note to it. Now we're on board with Dan Cooper. Into Craig Navarre. And glancing down there like he may have had some sort of issue. Little bit of a wire tuck, uh, front wheel tuck, I should say, from Connor Cummins. And look who's chasing him, Dean Harrison. And on board with Michael Dunlop out of Greber Bridge, heading west. You can just see the back of Michael's bike looks a little unstable there. A few twitches at the front and the back. That may be one of the reasons why he's not pushing those other two at the front. Well, Peter Hickman. Took his first TT victory earlier in the week in the Superstock TT. Now, you see from that onboard shot, Peter Hickman, very physical. That tall frame, the way he can really muscle that BMW from side to side. The Connor Cummins, first rider into Glen Helen. Dean Harrison, the second rider into Glen Helen, but the first rider on the leaderboard. And he's been really quick from the grandstand heading up to Ramsey. Oof. He was laying that Kawasaki <laughs> on its side. He could have just about put his elbow down there on his way past Sarah's cottage. He carried so much speed. We see so many riders going into Sarah's. They keep it nice and tight to the inside of the turn on the right-hand side of Sarah's cottage. We might see that from Michael Dunlop now. Yes, we do, but we saw Harrison really go wide and drift out. Michael Dunlop in fourth place, half a second behind Connor Cummins, and the gap between Dean Harrison and Peter Hickman has extended by three seconds just on that nine-and-a-half-mile run from the grandstand. See Gaz Johnson on his way through Glen Hallen. On board with Josh Brooks. He is fighting 
Well, he's pretty much on his own, actually. I was going to say he was fighting with uh, Gary Johnson, but he has a good advantage over Gary Johnson. 18 seconds. Now he's second year on the Norton. Starting to look quite comfortable on it. Martin Jessup just behind Ian Hutchinson through Glenn Helen. Jessup down in eighth place. And Ian Hutchinson does the gentlemanly thing. Oh, and lets him through, but just about. I tell you, let him through, but Martin went a little bit deep and he almost went back up the inside. Oof, heart in mouth. Hey, we've got the helicopter shot here. Kurt Michael. Through the village. 27 into Glen Helen, that's Sam West going really, really well. He's ahead of Martin Jessup and just behind Gary Johnson. As number 80 comes through, that's Davy Todd. Yeah, another rider as a newcomer. Davey's been impressing as he just increases his speed with his circuit knowledge every lap out there at this TT. Over Bluff Bridge they go. Michael Dunlop being pursued by Peter Hickman. Oh, Peter Hickman is catching Michael quickly, and there'll be only one rider smiling about that, and it won't be Dunlop. Whoa, through goes Hickman. Dunlop won't be happy. Dunlop back in fourth. He's 4.4 seconds behind Connor coming. Dean Harrison leading Peter Hickman by 5.4 seconds at Balaf. But as they go from Ramsey up over the mountain, this is where Peter Hickman has been getting the edge on Dean Harrison. Harrison is quicker to Ramsey, but Hickman is quicker from Ramsey back to the grandstand. Will Michael Dunlop be able to get the toe on the back of Pete Hickman? Well, looking at this, not Dave, because he's already gapped him. I don't know whether he's uh, gambled at all with something, Michael Dunlop, but whatever it is, it's not paying off today. You can see clearly how little of the road Michael is using compared to his normal line, but he's not riding with that same level of commitment. I would say he's not happy with his machine. Well, Paul Eden from Silicon, I was talking with him before the race, and I was talking to Jason Jones of Smith's Racing. They were both confident about their boys, and it seems to be paying off as Gary Johnson is past Michael Rutter. See the bikes just skipping up across those sections of bumps on the way out of May Hill there. It's, uh, the road is almost corrugated. So Dean Harrison through Bungalow, the next timing point. We have to wait for Peter Hickman to see whether Peter Hickman has once again eaten into Harrison's lead. Here he comes. Josh Brooks in fifth place, half a minute down on Michael Dunlop at Ramsey, but a good 18 seconds ahead of Sam West. Yeah, a view of nothing but clear road from the rear-facing camera of Josh Brooks. Dean Harrison versus Peter Hickman. That seems to be the battle that's developing in this senior TT. Through Hillbury goes Dean Harrison. He was 6.2 seconds ahead of Hickman at the bungalow. So Hickman has picked up two seconds from Ramsey to there. Will he continue to bite into Dean Harrison's lead at the end of lap three? Yeah, we thought this might have been a three-way tussle, but it looks like it's a two-way duel at the moment, Dave. Yeah, Connor Cummins in third place. He's got a good 13, uh, sorry, good 10 seconds ahead of Michael Dunlop. So here comes Dean Harrison to complete lap three. The Harrison over the line. That's Connor Cummins behind him. Yeah, will Connor be able to benefit from a little bit of a toe from Dean? We've seen him make the most of any rider that has passed him during the week. I'm sure he'll do the same in the senior if he can. Can Peter Hickman reduce that gap even further? But it seems to be de developing into Harrison from here to Ramsey and Hickman from Ramsey to the grandstand. 5.8 seconds the distance this time. We're on board with Dean Harrison. Still Colleen Kawasaki looks like it's working very well. I mean, it has to be for him to be able to ride these blisteringly quick lap times. That's another machine that also looks very good on road every time we see it. The Smith BMW. So we could be looking at lap times or lap record times this time around on lap four as we ride on board with Peter Hickman. Out of Kurt Michael. Well, Harrison was five seconds inside the lap record at Glen Helen. Peter Hickman was six seconds inside. The gap, 5.4 seconds. Harrison still leading. What we see here, it doesn't look like it's possible for Michael Dunlop to respond to these two. Yeah, he's way, way down. He's almost a minute down on the leading two riders. Unbelievable. Yeah, maybe he's... It's either he's uh, taken a gamble on a setup that he hasn't tried yet, or there's something on the bike that just isn't quite right. 
Well, Harrison and Hickman, both two seconds inside the lap record. We thought 135 miles was on on lap two. Slow speed of Pete Hickman Smith's BMW over the crest, keeping the back tyre on the ground, though, and the back tyre's on the ground. It's building speed. Just about. So into Parliament Square. Super speed from Peter Hickman. Primes it to perfection. And he looks, looks so comfortable aboard that BMW. Well, we see Dean Harrison now back on the mountain. He's already starting to encounter some slower traffic. And that could come into play in this race day. Yes, Harrison was half a second inside the lap record at Ramsey. But we often see in the footage these slower riders that are encountered on the lap, and it's part of the TT, and it can work for you, it can work against you. But everyone's out there doing their best. Well, the gap increased between Harrison and Hickman into Ramsey. Seven seconds there. It was four and a half seconds at the bungalow. What will it be at the end of lap four as they come into the pits? We're looking down on Dean Harrison. Here is Michael Dunlop still in fourth place and losing time to Connor Cummins in third. Peter Hickman out of signpost. And Hickman, two seconds inside the lap record at Crockner Mona. Two seconds inside the lap record. It needs to be 4.2 for 135 miles an hour. That won't go as we look at Dean Harrison across the line. The Dean, Dean Harrison slows for the pit. But what will Peter Hickman do? Down to Steve Plater. That's it, he's in there. Dean comes in for his second pit stop of the senior race. The guys are nice and relaxed. Dean's just asking for a visor change. He's changing the rear wheel. Just a standard pit stop. He was quite happy after pit stop one. No big issues, no big problems. He's had the hammer down there on lap four. But unfortunately, behind him, Hickey's been pushing even harder. And a new sector record from Ramsey Airpin through. Oh, we've got a problem with the rear. We have got a little issue with the rear. It's coming back out, back in. This is so critical in pit lane. It really, really is. This is what you just cannot afford. The, the, the win depends on this. This will be Kawasaki's first win in the seniors since 1978 with the great Mick Grant. So it's all to play for and all to push for. Obviously, these last two laps are going to be big. They really, really are. He'll be aware he's only a few seconds up on Hickey. He's got to get his head down and go, go, go. New lap record, Peter Hickman, 134.45. Well, Dave, we've had so many lap records this week and they just keep getting quicker. That's it. It's a new lap record for Pete Hickman on this lap. That was lap four. He pushed hard. I just said he got the best sector there from Ramsey Epping through to the bungalow. That's my old sector. Luckily, it's staying in Lincolnshire. It could be a record number of lap records that have been broken at the Isle of Man TT this week. Peter Hickman, 134.4. He's taken the lap record from this man, Dean Harrison. Dean is pushing very hard, as they both are. Both riders that have won TTs this week, both riding brilliantly, brimming with confidence, and less than two laps between them and their name on the senior TT trophy. This is going to go all the way to the wire if they stay to this script. We're looking at Connor Cummins in third place, a lonely third place. He's around 52 seconds down on the two men ahead of him. Right on board with Peter Hickman coming now, up to Greba. Now, so far in this race, we see... The distance between Harrison. Oh, now then, Michael Rutter with a problem. And look at the front, something's wrong. Yeah, it's definitely an issue there. It looks like the end of the TT for Michael Rutter. Dean Harrison again up through with a much tighter line up through Sarah's Cottage that time than the previous lap. Michael Dunlop half a minute down on Connor Cummins in fourth place. Now we've seen the gap squeeze up at the end of each lap, and then it opens up between Harrison and Hickman on this run out to Ramsey. Look at the sector times here, Dave. 6.2, the difference at Glen Helen. It was 1.4. So Hickman lost time in the pits as well. Now it's about the time of the race. These boys would start to talk to their machines. They'd be starting to say, come on, just a lap to go. Get me home. Let's do this job. The Connor Cummins into his hometown. And looking good for a podium. But Peter Hickman, he lost nearly four seconds to Dean Harrison in the pits, and he has to make it up again. Oh! Sam West in a really good position, battling away with Gary Johnson on the leaderboard.
Josh Brooks also in fifth place. Out Dean of the Harrison coming up onto the mountain section. Out of the gooseneck. Now we're back into Hickman territory. The gap was five seconds at Balaf. What will it be out of Ramsey? We say Hickman territory, but I tell you, Dean Harrison certainly not slow over the mountain. Yeah, any other aspiring TT riders could learn a lot from watching how he rides over this section. The gap was 4.9 seconds at Ramsey. On lap one, Hickman was a second faster from Ramsey to Douglas. Lap two, three seconds, two and a half seconds on lap three, five and a half seconds on lap four. What will it be on lap five? Harrison into the bungalow. We'll see how Harrison goes. Is he going to get clear track? Or are they going to encounter any more traffic before this race is over, Dave? Elwood Heights, the highest part of the TT course. Michael Dunlop still in fourth place, but losing time on each sector to Connor Cummins. Yeah, it just seems Michael Dunlop's definitely not happy at the moment, not riding to the level that we know he's capable of and just seems to be ticking off the laps. Josh Brooks is around 40 seconds down on Michael Dunlop. So Josh Brooks still holding fifth. Oh, Sam West. Oh, no, he's pulling over, and he was riding so well, Sam West, in the top ten. In seventh place, in fact. Peter Hickman through Hillbury. The gap at the bungalow was 3.6 seconds. Here we go, down the start finish straight. There he goes. Whoa, that makes the air stand up on the back of your neck. It really does. Dean's pushing hard. This is going to be one big last lap. Only a few seconds between Dino and Hickey. It's all to play for, of course, for either of them's first senior win. Well, the gap between them at Cronk Namona, a mile or so further back up the road, was two and a half seconds. Here is Peter Hickman. What will the gap be this time? down the side of the pit fence that's incredible that boy's going to be pushing hard and trying to better his lap record from lap four 1.9 seconds the gap at the end of lap five now as we see it concertina back out dean harrison as michael dunlop wobbles his way past the grandstand yeah i think he's shaking the handlebars and his head with frustration so then <laughs> what a final lap this is. The fans are going crazy on the side as Dean Harrison goes into Balacrane. We see the gap open up each time up to Ramsey. Dean Harrison's got to push, push, push. Peter Hickman will be strong over the mountain. Dean Harrison has to get a big gap between the two of them going into Ramsey. If either of these two riders have ever had a reason to push, it's now. And also, we've got traffic to contend with. What role will they play in the outcome of this race? They could play a huge role, Dave, because we all know how difficult it is to safely pass slower competitors on the TT course. Hickman into Balacrane. The battle is on. Harrison versus Hickman. A new name looks to be on the Senior TT Trophy. We know that both Dean Harrison and Pete Hickman are both smart, intelligent racers. They won't want to take any unneeded risks when they're passing these slower riders. Cameron, Dean Harrison, two seconds inside the lap record at Glen Helen. Did you see the back tyre just break away there under acceleration? He is... <laughs> He's pushing. He is pushing, and I think that's an understatement, Cameron. Dean Harrison is going for it. It'll Both be... of these riders entering uncharted territory, riding the Isle of Man course quicker than anyone has done before. Connor Cummins trying to find a way through at Glen Helen. Not often you come up behind this many lapped riders in close succession. This could really have an effect on these riders dicing for the lead. Yep. How will Peter Hickman? Find a way through. We saw Michael Dunlop being held up, and there he goes, Hickman, 3.7 seconds. Will he come up behind him in the corners? Will he come up behind them on Cronker Body straight? We're yet to see, but it doesn't look good. Hickman inside the lap record, not as quick as Dean Harrison, though. Michael Dunlop through Glen Helen, still in fourth and losing time. Hand over fist to Connor Cummins. But he needs to sit there in fourth. We've seen how many bikes have not finished races this week. If he has a DNF in front of him, he could easily make up a position. As we see Peter Hickman into Kirk Michael. Now, that really slowed him up. And this is not Ooh, where you want to find riders, is it, Ter Cameron? Through here. This is hurting Peter Hickman hugely. He's off the throttle where he should be on the throttle. Peter Hickman trying to thread his way through. 
Dean Harrison into Ramsey. Now at Balaf, he was three seconds inside the lap record. Peter Hickman was a second outside the lap record. Now will have been because of all the slower traffic. 5.7 seconds, the difference between them at Balaf. Will that gap reduce or will it be about the same as they come into Ramsey? Oh, Hickman charging. Ed Hickman is catching Connor Cummins on the way into Ramsey. He'll want to get past him under brakes. He will not want to be held up by Connor. Too true. He should just squeeze up the inside here. Connor won't know he's there. He might just see him as he see, shows him his front wheel. Connor will just let him go through. That has worked out very well for Peter Hickman. Yeah, it has. Well, Peter made that work. Michael Dunlop through Milntown. And now we're back up onto the mountain for the last lap. And if we've ever seen... Dean Harrison pushes now with only two seconds the gap. Well, both Harrison and Hickman were three seconds inside the lap record at Ramsey. Hickman is around four to five seconds faster each lap than Harrison from Ramsey to the grandstand. I think it could be Peter Hickman. If the story of this race goes as the previous five laps does, it will be Peter Hickman's race. We just saw Peter Hickman two wheel slide that super bike at near near at 200 miles an hour than 150 that's just it's mesmerizing to watch yeah it's incredible so peter hickman through the bungalow dean harrison has got through peter hickman leads peter hickman leads a tenth of a second ahead of dean harrison he's five seconds inside the lap record so 135 miles is on i think they've both been hurt by lap traffic but now it's down to them they've both got a clear run off the mountain how are these cards going to fall? I think it's going to go at this pace. It has to go 135 miles an hour. We count them as fives now, don't we? His off 120, Dave Jeffries 125, John McGinnis 130. Will it be Dean Harrison? Will it be Peter Hickman with 135 miles an hour? Oh, Dean Harrison. Harrison using all the road on the way into Governor's Dip. He can't waste a second. He will have his teeth grit. He won't be blinking, he won't be taking a breath as he crosses the line to finish his senior TT. Look, Dean Harrison crosses the line, we've got to wait for Peter Hickman. Oh, Peter Hickman, oh, no. traffic again, traffic again. This could cost him dearly. Not only just one, but he's got two. This could be Dean Harrison's race. Oh, Hickman out from under the trees. Oh, no, that's a cruel blow for, for Pete Hickman. So here comes Peter Hickman across the line. He wins the senior TT at 135.4 miles an hour. We've witnessed history. <laughs> 135 miles per hour. So Connor Cummins takes third. Dean Harrison is second. Peter Hickman takes the win. Wow. Connor Cummins rounding out the podium. Peter, the only way to start. 135.4. What is that all about? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I saw when I came across the line, you know, I saw 16.42 on the dash. I know it's somewhere near, the line's not always perfect on the GPS, but I knew it would be a fast lap. And uh, yeah, I was just point to point everywhere and just hitting all my markers and just pushing them that little meter or two here and there where I thought I've, you know, I had a bit of margin and uh, here we are. Yeah, no, I felt comfortable. I pushed on the last lap. I lost so much time from Sulby all the way to Ramsey because we back markers uh, on the road. And you've got to be so cautious when you pass them on the track. So I lost four seconds in, in that sector to do, and I did my fastest lap. So disappointing, but fair play to Peter, a good race all the way through. Yeah, I'm really happy to be on the rostrum again. I feel like I've been riding strong all week. Um, but it's, you know, it's not only down to me, it's down to the team. The Padgett team have put a, a great package together for me for all the, all the season. So thanks to uh, the team and all the sponsors. Yeah, I'm just excited to be on the box again. Wow, what a race. I mean, honestly, I'm still buzzing. That was a masterclass from Pete, wasn't it? What a grand finale it really was. You should have felt the tension down here in pit lane, both the pit stops. You know, the guys did a great job, yeah. but it was to win or lose just here, but fabulous all the way through. Cam. What about these lap times? Well, we were all talking, we were going to see the 135, and it was almost on for lap two. We had to wait for that last lap. And after Dean leading every lap, for Pete to come through on that last lap with a 135, like Dave, it incredible. Was, it was incredible. And also the fact that Peter lost so much time in the pits and then to claim it back. And we knew once he got to Ramsey, he was so much quicker than Dean Harrison over the mountain. It was just a case of that countdown to the checkered flag and 135 at the end. Wow. We've just picked ourselves up off the floor, haven't we? You could not have scripted a, a better finish to the TT. 
Hey, if the weather isn't as good as this for the next few years, that record could stand for a long, long time. It really could. Well, I think that really is going to go down in TT history as one of the best races. Um, and a huge congratulations to Peter Hickman.